By now, you have probably at least heard of a new movie called The House with a Clock in Its Walls. You may have seen a trailer for it, maybe you've actually seen the movie. I have not. This is the book that it is based on, and I was given this book probably in 1984, maybe 83, something like that. One of the first really great spooky books I was ever given. Long before there was Goosebumps, there was John Belair's. House of the Clock and Its Walls is a fantastic book. It is atmospheric, it is gothy, gothy, excuse me, wow. It is gothic, it is spooky, it's creepy. It's, it's, it's got everything you would want out of a really good slow burn sort of spooky story. But this is not the book I'm gonna talk about because there's probably eight million other reviews of the movie and the book out there already. I have been extolling the virtues of John Belair's for decades. Nobody listened to me, and now, of course, there's a movie out. Oh, John Belair's, ah! Which is good. I'm glad he's getting some play finally, although, unfortunately, the author died many, many years ago, which was a great loss. The book I do want to review and share with you so that you go out and buy it immediately is The, uh, the Mummy, The Will, and The Crypt. Uh, this was 83. Um, this was probably, it wasn't even the second or third book of his. He's got a whole, like, this is just a very short stack. He's got a whole series of books starring various, starring various characters. And this one is far and away my favorite. This is probably, in my estimation, the best introduction to John Belair's, uh, particularly for reluctant readers. If you're an adult reader or you, le or you read at an adult level, you can tear through one of John Belair's books in a day, maybe half a day, maybe two days if you're busy. It's very easy to read. But John Belair's is extremely literate. He's a very literary writer, and that really works in favor of the story. The Mummy, the Will, and the Crypt, however, I think is a great introduction for most younger readers because it goes straight for the creepy factor. Uh, there are some really chilling moments in this book. Nothing, you know, that's going to keep them up nights or anything like that, okay? But uh, just really, like, literally spine-tingling, like, uh, kind of things, dealing with... Uh, We'll call it a mummy. I don't know if it's technically a mummy or not. And, and a great mystery. John Blair's writes great mysteries in all of his books. Some of them are exclusively sort of thriller mysteries. Others get more supernatural, like Mummy, the Will and the Crypt, and House with the Clock in Its Walls. There's magic and things like that. There's also science. In The Mummy, the Will, and the Crypt, the main character is Johnny, and his best friend is this older guy named The Professor. The Professor is awesome. Really well-drawn characters, excellent plots, the Mummy, the Will, and the Crypt uh, is basically about Johnny, who is about 12, 13 years old. His grandmother is very sick, and he believes she is dying. He finds out about a hidden will on this estate way out in the boonies somewhere, and the person who finds the will will get this big uh, paycheck from the family who cannot find this rich guy's will. It's been lost for years and years and years. So Johnny takes it upon himself uh, to go and find the will. The problem, there are many problems, one of the problems is that Johnny is not a heroic character right from the get-go. He's very meek, mild, bespectacled, kind of, you know, keeps to himself, and this, uh, this situation forces him to take action and to literally risk his life against agents of evil and against supernatural creatures to try and save his grandmother. That's awesome stuff right there, man. That is so great. This isn't a kid, you know, who is plucked out of obscurity to go fight in the games. You know what I'm saying? Like, he he really comes to his heroism quite organically and naturally, and I think makes uh, for a great hero for younger readers uh, to, to identify with. Like, oh yeah, I could totally see that guy. He's not a big athlete. He's very nervous and gets upset about things, but he does it. He takes action, and it works so, so sublimely. So again, check out The Mummy, The Will, and the Crypt. This is a very creepy little book. Love it. Out of all of John Belair's books, it is definitely my favorite. If you haven't read House with a Clock in Its Walls yet, you should read that one too. Again, atmospheric, gothic, creepy, magical, supernatural. It's got all of these wonderful, wonderful elements in, in it. Uh, and really, you can start with pretty much any of John Belair's books. They're all good. They do not have to be read in sequence which is also helpful, not like, you know, series of today, you kids. One other thing, though, I do have to say about this review is after John Belair's passed away, the publisher, understandably, uh, took a lot of incomplete manuscripts and farmed them out to get finished by other writers. 
personal opinion, I don't think those are as good. I've tried a couple and I couldn't really get into them. There was just something uh, very distinct about the voice that is missing in those other books. I'm not saying don't, you make up your own mind, but when you pick up a John Belair's book, do make sure that it is just John Belair's and not John Belair's and, you know, somebody else. Uh, start with the real thing. Start with the real article. I think you'll be much, much happier at the end of the day. So, hope you enjoy the movie. I have not seen it. I don't know if I'm going to go see it, but by all means, check out uh, John Belair's books. Start with Mummy, the Will, and the Crypt or House of the Clock and Its Walls really any of them. They're all fantastic and you will, I guarantee, if you are into the creepy books, if you're into spooky stuff, if you found Goosebumps, for example, which I still love, don't get me wrong, I'm still a big Goosebumps fan, but if you found Goosebumps to be a little sticky sweet, kind of, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost, you can read a Goosebumps book and it's like getting a cavity. <laughs> you know, no offense, I don't mean that in a bad way. You know, can you name five main characters from Goosebumps books? I've got like Carly Beth, uh, Deep, somebody Deep, I don't remember, William, Billy, Billy Deep, Billy Deep, there's two, that's it, that's all I got, um, Goosebumps you read for the twist, you read that for the thrill, for the, for the snap ending, John Belair's you read, you gotta, you, you curl up with a John Belair's book in front of a roaring fire in winter, if at all possible, you know, you don't really do that with Goosebumps, with Goosebumps you can like read while you're, while you're eating Frosted Flakes, two very different books, not better or worse, which is very, very different in this humble author's opinion. So anyhow, The House with a Clock in Its Walls and The Mummy, The Will, and The Crypt. Take a look at them. Um, and also make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, like it, share it around, share it with other people. I'm going to be doing a lot more of these book reviews, hopefully, as I'm starting to slowly build my channel. So I hope you will join me with that. And if you do subscribe, which I hope you will, make sure you click the little bell. If you don't click the bell, then you will not get updates as soon as I post them. So it's very important to click the bell. Click the bell. All right, and keep an eye on this channel because I'm going to be bringing you a whole lot of new fun content for both readers and writers. It's going to be really cool. So I will see you at the next book review. Enjoy John Belair's.